Hur kom jag på trap sons 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 trap so we're bringing it to you. Okay? That's, that's, everyone keeps asking, when's Greg coming back? Greg is back. We're going to try to do it Saturday. As long as I'm in town, we're going to have it. We're gonna have yeah, it yeah. If you're around and I'm around, might as well do it, which is great. I want to thank our sponsor, Speedweed. Listen, when you're in need for weed, Speedweed is the place to go. They got the best edibles, the best CBD oil, the best marijuana, anything you need, the best vapes, every, anything you need as far as marijuana and cannabis oil. And, and if you're fighting and you need, you need the roll-ons, they have the sprays, they have cannabis dip. They got you covered. Go to speedweed.com. Use the term roasted for 10% off orders over $100 or more. Uh, I feel the need for Speedweed. I like it. It's actually yeah, yeah, it's yes. So how are you doing, Greg? Top Gun moment there for you. So, so what's going on? What is going on? Now I'm on break from the game show, which is nice. I have these two weeks, and I'll be out just doing shows this weekend out at the El Paso Comic Strip, which you were there recently, I think. I, I, I love the plat place. Yeah, and then, uh, and then I'll be in Vegas for the Dirty at 1230 on the 29th. And then in, uh, in in Seattle at the Underground for New Year's Eve. So I'm Not, very excited. Nice. And we're going to see each other in Vegas. Yes. And we're going to go to the fights. Yes. Yes, we Can are. I just say really quickly, like, okay, so tonight, which by the time this thing is out there, it'll probably be over. Yeah. But is Dos Anjos uh, versus Lawler. Robbie Lawler, yeah. And this is free on Fox. Yes. So Fox UFC Fight Night. Yes. But the the Holly Holm yep. is a pay-per-view. Yep. Okay. It does seem like this... Wouldn't be necessarily a pay-per-view card. But uh, more but than that card. I don't understand. Well, having Holly Holm as a pay-per-view... Uh, headliner. Headliner really doesn't make any sense because she's not even the number one ranked girl at 135. Right. So now we're going up, up to 145 where there's virtually no weight class at all. Just Cyborg. Right. Uh, just, <laughs> so now just we're... Just Cyborg sitting there sweating. And, and, and if she loses, does she go back down to 135? Like... <laughs> It, it really doesn't make much sense. I, I and, and yet that's a pay per view. See, that's but, what I'm saying. Like they keep doing this, where it's like they make shows that I don't think should be pay per views, pay per views, and then this I think should be a pay per view. Although I'm glad it's not because I, I can't wait to see this fight. I'm glad it's not too, especially because Mike Perry is on that card. Who yeah, oh, that like, loud mouth. Oh, um, the guy that Alan Juban beat, who beat Allen Berger, and during the weigh in, he tried to smell his opponent this time. He's so he's hey man, listen, you know what? We're talking about him. Wait, so, wait, who know? smells their opponent? Like that's just a whole new way. A whole new form of, cr- of like creepiness. Like, yeah, I wonder what he said though. Like, smells like fear. Something. Yeah. Like, yeah, maybe. Maybe he was looking for coke, and uh, he, he just, thought he had some in there. <laughs> maybe something's a little strange. I think he's gonna lose to Ponzinibbio, but you know, think about Mike Perry. He hits super hard, and he's super confident. And yeah. when you're confident like that, and yeah. you're, it's just confidence is so important. You see, it really you, is because you see guys like they win ten in a row. And then all of a sudden they lose one and they're never the same. I mean, a lot of like Burrow or even yeah, Aldo. Because they don't or, even realize they can lose. And then when they do, it's like it shakes them to the core. Other guys like uh, are not that confident, but then they have the fight of their lives. And they're like, oh shit, I can hang at this level. And right. then, they're, and then they're, they're, they're different fighters, you know? Yeah. So it, it's just, it's weird the way that that works. Um, but yeah, that's just a good card. But uh, but Khabib's on that card. Khabib, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, right. So is he fighting? He's going to sh- uh, He's fighting I mean, right now. No, no, he's fighting on on, uh, on, uh, on that uh, New Year's card, actually. But I'm saying, like, he's still scheduled to fight, but you don't I, think he's going to show up. It's so funny. I, no, I think he's going to show up. I do, I, of course. He, or get injured. Only or... once since he re- I, I did, like, week of the fight against uh, uh, Ferguson. Did something. And oh, I think and that was weird. Like, they didn't let his family into the country. And then, it, you know... It was a weird circumstance. Yeah, I wonder who's to blame for that one. <laughs> yeah, wonder. Meanwhile, by the way, my wrestling team won. Yeah, I saw uh, that. That's we, great. We, like the team won as a team. We won as a team. We won seventy-one to thirty against Harvard Westlake, and there, it's a super expensive school. It's like a very it sounds like it's it. in Beverly Hills. I think it's like fifty thousand a year. To I, go I there. feel like you had to pay him money just to say it just now. Yeah. That, <laughs> And it was one of those things when I first came to LA, like I, I got this wrestling coach job. They never had a program. And then I, I coached him for a week and then I had to leave, right? I had yeah. to leave. So Dixon Math, remember Dixon Matthews? He was a com- yes. comedian for a second and now he's a chef. So I'm like, I need someone to help me. He's like, I used to wrestle. He did like WWE wrestling, but, to- <laughs> but to- told me he did like prefer- like wrestling. Uh, so I left teaching him pile drivers? So I left him with the team, right? They were all doing like front acrobatic flips to escapes. <laughs> and like, 
stuff that was so not I came real wrestling. I came back and Harbor Westlake beat us like seventy one to nothing. I Eesh. mean, they just it was so bad that like my my guy this is like twelve years ago brought in another coach. Yeah. Like, hey, maybe you want to help these guys out, and the coach is like, yeah, you don't want to lose seventy one to nothing. But like, it wasn't my fault. I only had the team for a week, right? You know. But now, uh, but now it's a whole. It, it was like. I, right. I, you I, had I, this circled on your calendar. Oh, it was great, and it, and it was funny. Like there was this little, uh, this little kid on my team. He's been going there for a, like a month, practice. He's about to go out to his match. He looks at me and he goes, "Coach, what do I do?" Like, like, <laughs> like, like what do you do? I like, think it's uh, wrestling time, kid. Yeah, like, what do you mean? What do you do? Like, like, what, you do like, everything we've been practicing for the last six weeks. Right, and then that little kid from uh, from uh, uh, Chechnya. He actually won three matches. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was actually losing the first match. It's a kid who was like a beast, and he, and then he comes off and he won. He pinned the kid. And he goes, "I thought I lost." I'm like, "No, no, you won." Like, he, <laughs> like he didn't really understand like all the rules because it's different over there. Well, he's but, just here to infiltrate our country. No, so. no, the kid is he's killing it. I was so proud of him. I am here to start fire in Ventura. He's such a nice kid. Uh, such a nice kid. That's great. And I was uh, I was so happy for these kids because like you know it's so nice when you see a kid that like. Like never did anything athletic in his life, or like right. you know, and then he goes out there and just wins, and his parents are like, "Did you see the parents so proud of them?" Because they don't really know what's going right, on. Right, 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 right. It was funny. Like one of the moms made us all cookies for the team, and I was like, "Okay, these are my cookies. Uh, if you win, you get a cookie. If not, you have to have, watch me eat the cookie." <laughs> ah, and then uh, that friend, sounds like something I would do if I were coaching. <laughs> Only I would just eat the cookies. Oh, you won? Oh, I'll get you a cookie, kid. I owe you one. But it was so funny. Uh, Russell Russell Peters, uh, there's a little Indian kid on my team. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, I'm good friends with Russell Peters. And he didn't, he didn't believe me. He's like, no, you're not. So Russell Peters actually FaceTimed the kid before the match. Really? Because the, the kid was super nervous. And so Russell wished him good luck. And then, uh, and then his, and then his, he was so excited. And then his, his brothers didn't believe that Russell Peters really did it. So Russell made a video for him saying, "See, Derek, like you win. You t t talk to Russell Peters, and then you win wrestling matches." That's so, funny. I mean, how cool is that? A Russell to do that? Dude, that guy's the nicest guy ever. Ever, ever. I mean, you don't meet celebrities that big that like do stuff like that. Uh, so then, then uh, Russell asked me to open up for him last night at the Comedy Magic Club. And oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm still like not that comfortable at that club though, because you have to dress super nice. You have to wear like a button-down shirt or like a, and then you got to be totally clean. Right. Not totally clean, but clean enough where anything you say that's edgy gets a ooh. You know, like I'm still right, not, right. I'm still not as free. Wow, you got to be that clean. Like you got to be super clean. I just uh, you don't have to be super clean, if, especially if you're famous. You don't yeah. have to be clean at all. Uh, but it's just still like I'm not. I'm not comfortable. Like I'm, I, I did well. I had a good set, but you know how it is. Like at the Ha Ha, where it's yeah. like your home club, or or one of these other places, and then you go to a, a, a place like that where it's like, uh, I don't know. Just like there are certain places like you just, I don't know. You just somehow I'm not as. But then I did the Laugh Factory, hosted that show, which yeah. is like, you know, you know, it was just amazing. It, That's it great. Was like, yeah, it was. It was good. It was. I mean, but of course, Brie came. Uh, with her friends. Oh, that's and, great. You want to see her cr see you crush. Yeah, I want to see me crush. But but, that, but her friends saw me bomb. Like the fir our first date, they came, and my dad, my dad was there, and he's like, "Dude, if she talks to you again, uh, you're gonna be this is the, marry her." Because uh, <laughs> she can see your potential. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what he said. <laughs> Her friends, son, son, you didn't do the pussy closing set you usually do tonight. So if you ever see her again, she really likes you. She brought all her feminist friends. They were just judgy, judgy pandas, oh, you know. Oh. Just, uh, but uh, I mean, does does uh, were you, were you nervous when Summer first saw you or not? No, really. Well, uh, no, because I mean, I met her after I super crushed. Right. Yeah. So I mean, I, and let me tell you something. Summer and at this time. This is when I would still collect phone numbers yeah. as opposed to, this is like right at the dawn of social media. We're talking like 2000, uh, 2006, yeah. 2007. So it was still MySpace was kind of the big thing. And Facebook was just beginning to really take over. And so I would still get girls numbers, you know, so I could text them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so she was like one of like a dozen numbers I got that night. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, I was on fire. I was collecting pussy. I got I to gotta tell you a funny story about that. After, so we're, we're going to call a guy right now who's 14 and one okay. in the UFC, former heroin addict, former coke addict, oh, been man. to rehab 10 times. Wow, he really loves it. Yeah, and now he's, uh, now he's, he's, he's killing it in the uh, UFC. Well, you know, that just shows you, sometimes, you know, rehab doesn't work if you're not ready to quit. 
Yeah. Rehab only works if you're going there like, I got to quit. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you go there like, because you, you have to go there, you're going to start using the second you get out. I mean, it just happens. Well, isn't that, isn't that kind of everything in life? I guess so. I mean, if you're not ready to diet, you're not going to lose the weight. You know, uh, Jared? Listen, I'm ready to lose the weight. I'm just not ready to diet. <laughs> Hello, is this, is this Jared Gordon? I just want to be naturally thin. Jared. <laughs> Uh, in another riveting episode oh, of no, MMA Roasted. I got this. I got Wait, this. Wait, this isn't the right number? All right, I got this. Uh, this is going to work. Okay, so we're going to call him on the cell phone. Tell him we're calling him on the Skype. Yes, because Skype what is it When Skype calls you, what does it look like? I like think no says, ID? Yeah, no ID. People that's why the people don't answer. Yeah, people, people think yeah. it's like a... You have to let them know first. Hey, that's me, man. Answer the no ID call. Otherwise... Well, people, would... I feel like people don't take up the phone anyway now. Like, you know, I was shooting a project recently, and I was scheduled for a conference call to discuss it with the director first. And I thought... I thought... Hello? Oh, wait. All right, go on. I thought um, they were going to call me. Yeah, and be I would just be on the conference call, so I'm waiting like the entire time, and the time passes, and it gets later, and I'm like, what the fuck happened to these guys? I thought we were gonna have a conference call. Then I start getting emails going, so Greg, what happened to you, man? Listen, you want to try to get it? One, I'm like, what happened? And then I read the instructions, and I was supposed to call into them uh. and like enter some code to enter the conference call. So really, I completely missed it, and um, looked great. I was really uh, looked like a real pro. Well, it's crazy. Like, so I'm on the road all the time, uh, you know, driving an hour, yeah. two hours, and I like to talk to people when I when I when I, when I, when I drive. Yeah. So that's one time I get to catch up, and nobody picks up the phone. Yeah. Like nobody. Like it's now it's a, it's a matter of like we don't like to talk on the phone anymore. Nobody wants it, and it's annoying because I, there's only so much you can do texting. Like somebody. T I, oh, the worst is having an actual conversation via text. Like, can we at this point talk? Like, I understand if it's a one question, one answer thing, but if we're actually going back and forth, hey, let's pick up the phone and actually just talk. What what about that? I, I can't have anything. To no, that do has nothing. My, my dad just makes stuff up. Yeah, like maybe, maybe. By, by, by the way, my, by the way, my, my dad's in the room. He makes stuff up. And then gets mad when I'm like, you have no idea what you're talking about. And then he goes, I don't need this. I don't need this. You know? He just told me that, that Adam is able to join uh, oh, no, the Wi-Fi no, in the room. And I can't all, because he has, he has Verizon. He has all these, my dad has all these theories about why things are. And, and then I'm like, no, that has nothing to do with it. And then he gets mad and goes, oh, I don't need this. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I knew Salvador Dali. You know, yeah. So, so, yeah, did yeah. you know Salvador Dali? Yeah. Did he smell weird? Was he uh, bad? No, he smelled good. Yeah. Yeah. He was, was he a weirdo? Didn't really smell him. You didn't smell him. <laughs> you ain't close enough. So, anyway. Did he get, <laughs> never get that close. So, uh, so anyway, uh, you, you, do, you, do you have any uh, spots tonight, Greg? Uh, no, tonight is the annual uh, yeah. ugly sweater, ugly Christmas sweater. Party with uh, some friends. Oh, nice! You yeah. always go to party. You have a lot of friends. You know, your friends are never comics, though. Right? right. I have like regular friends. Really? Which is very nice. It's good to have non-comedy friends. The, the worst when you go to a comedy party and everyone's either networking or trying out their material. Yeah. You uh, know what it is? It was for conference room five G. Now, which is a different one than just regular conference room because that one connected. So there we go. So we're all set up now. Yeah. So I that, actually. But, but that's the worst when when. Uh, uh, everyone's well, trying out material. Well, that's home. what I'm saying. Like, comics tend to not be very good friends because everyone's so self-involved. Which, I mean, here's the thing. It takes a lot of ego to be a comedian to begin with. You know, I mean, at some point in your mind, you have to think to yourself, I'm so brilliant that people need to pay money to hear me talk. Okay? Now, that takes a lot of ego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you put a bunch of people like that in a room together, and it's not necessarily great conversation. It's kind of a lot of people talking at each other. Yeah, no, you're right. So it's there. nice to be in a, have a whole other group of friends that are just people, you know, that I'm the comedian, quote unquote, of the group. Yeah. Um, and so that's, you know, it's very nice, very regular. Although it is know? annoying when, like, non-comic friends want to give you advice on comedy. Like, oh yeah but that, I mean that just you know most of them don't do that I mean, I mean I the worst is so or, or like family members like hey why don't you get on a, uh, a show oh yeah it's like what, dude what's his name Chris Garrett has this funny thing about moving to LA and his dad told him here's what you do his dad from Milwaukee Wisconsin <laughs> is like here's what you do you go down there to NBC and you tell him hey I'm ready to work Oh, oh I, I, <laughs> like, I it's a, like, like it's a construction site or something it's like where, where, where's the hiring office I have people that I never met before like text me or DM me on Instagram going, hey, why don't just, why doesn't Joe Rogan help you out more? 
I'm like, like, we're not- ask fucking Joe Rogan, number one. Number two, like, who are you? And yeah. like, why are we even having this dialogue? Yeah. Uh, I, I, so I'm right, I wrote back, I was on his podcast once. Like, yeah, that was three years ago. Leave me alone. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, worry about your fucking life, dude. Fuck, man. I, uh, I, someone was showing me some of the Cardi Bye, B. Dad. We'll see you later, buddy. You know the you know who Cardi B is that yeah, yeah, horrible chick is. rapper. Um, some of her videos, her Instagram videos or Twitter videos that she puts up, hysterical. Why? Not a fan of her music, but I am a fan of these. Why? 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 What is Because she she's like, she, I guess she got her teeth fixed, and she's like, "Don't be coming at me with that shit that 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 uh, you miss my old teeth. You and my teeth weren't friends. Yeah. Oh, oh my really? god, I thought that was hysterical. You and my you don't miss my teeth. Don't miss you. You don't miss my teeth. Oh god. I just fucking just attacked her. It was hysterical. Okay, so Sean O'Malley's not picking up either. So I I don't, I don't think we have any 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 guests today. Uh, on that podcast, so yeah, this is this has been. Uh, I don't I don't care. All 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 I need is fucking Greg, honestly. But uh, it'll be a short show. No, no, it's not gonna be a short show. We're we're we're, we're not gonna be a short show. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Hey, what's up? It's Adam Hunter I'm calling you for the podcast. Okay, cool. I'm gonna call you in like one second on from a a, a, a different number. Okay. All right. So we're calling. All right. Did you see there? Right when you were about to give up. Yeah. Right when you were about to quit. I, I was yeah, I was about to quit the show. About to quit on fucking people picking up the phone. Oh, I was gonna quit the show. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, Cardi B. I, I like. I don't even know Cardi B. I, I do like her attitude though. Dude, this. You know what the thing is? Her song. You know her big hit song that I'm buying the po- I'm the money now. Yeah, yeah. I go get it now. Okay. This. Oh wait. Okay, when I hear. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, is this Sean O'Malley? Yeah. Hey, how's it going? This is Adam Hunter. You're on the MMA Roasted Podcast. How's it going, buddy? Doing awesome. How are you? I'm doing good, man. You're here with the Greg Wilson. Uh, hey. So, I don't, Greg, I don't know if you know this guy, Sean O'Malley. So, he's he's 9-0. and 0. Mm-hmm. He looks like Conor McGregor and Screech had a baby. Okay? Ooh. Like, he has, this, <laughs> he, has this, like, he has this crazy afro hair. Yeah. He's got sick knockout power. I mean, he just knocks fuckers out left and right. Totally unorthodox. And, and I, spinning wheel kicks. I mean, just cr- love it. Just cr- and he's from Montana. So, uh, how are you, Sean? Doing doing awesome. Just got done with practice. Just getting home. So I'm doing good. So you you living in Arizona now? Yep, living in Arizona. Uh, me and my girlfriend just bought a house. Nice. Well, I'm, what are you? 22 years old. 23. 23, and you bought a house. I'm 39. I can't afford a house. <laughs> you prick. Nice work. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Are you gonna are you gonna are you gonna um, mow your rocks? Do you have one of those rock lawns gonna, that you or, or uh, they? Oh, really? I, in Arizona, they have. Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. And I see them out there like raking the rocks. Are you gonna do that? Are you gonna mow your rocks? No, I'm. I'm, I'm thinking about putting in some of that astroturf, that fake grass stuff. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Now, dude, you're, then I don't gotta mow that either. Now, dude, your your uh your your last fight, by the way. Uh, was against my buddy Terry Onware, so I was kind of rooting for my buddy because he's been on the podcast ten times. But I liked you. I wasn't, oh, really? I, I wasn't rooting against you. I, I just know Terry on <laughs> personally. I wasn't really like anyone. Like I, I, I like you and I, I like what you do. What you, yeah. But I'm like, oh, it would be nice, Terry on. But that was a fucking war, man. Uh, great Fuck fight. Yeah. Congratulations on that fight, man. Thank you. Yeah, Terry on. He's uh, he seems super cool. I talked to him a little after. Uh, I was hoping me and him would get that 50 G fight of the night, but yeah, that is you know, such bullshit that you didn't get so. that, <laughs> that. You definitely should have got that fight of the night. That was way better yeah. than, the, than the than the the Roxanne model fight. The Roxanne fight was good, but, oh, that, yeah, but well, your fight was like a different level, man. Different level. Hundred percent. Yeah, I agree. But whatever. What are we gonna do? Uh, yeah, no, man. It's all good. You uh, so I mean. You, now your style is um is so unorthodox. Now is it are uh. Do you have a uh, karate background? What's your, what's what's your background? Um, no, I don't actually. I pretty much taught myself all my own kicks. Uh, I kind of started out um, boxing and kickboxing, but it was more of just sparring. I never really learned technique. I don't know. It's kind of just until I moved to Arizona is really when I started learning, um, you know, techniques. But yeah, I pretty much taught my own all my own kicks and stuff. So you taught yourself that like spinning wheel kick, that LFA thing that you did was that was amazing. Uh, that was st- oh yeah, that's all that self-taught. Was, uh, I I work on that a lot. You know, I what I do is I throw that right head kick, 
up against the fence to make them. They only can go one way after I throw that kick, and that's into my power when I spin. So I, I throw that. That wasn't lucky or nothing. I throw that all the time. Nice. Well, I mean, that was that was amazing. Now, Snoop Dogg loved you. I mean, he was like, yeah. he was all about you. Did you guys smoke weed afterwards together? Yes, we did. It was fucking sweet. Yeah, bro. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking sweet. I mean, how, how, how strong was Snoop Dogg's weed? Um, that, I, think it's a, I think he got it from a dispensary that I have gotten weed from before. But, yeah, I hadn't smoked in, like, two weeks because I had to pass the test. So I was, and then after the fight, I just had like a natural high because I just got, you know, got signed to UFC. So I was like high on that. I bet. And then I fucking smoke with Snoop, and then I was about to lost my brain. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that, that's but awesome. But it was fun. That, I mean, now, I mean, did you ever think to yourself like one day I'm gonna be in the UFC smoking weed with Snoop Dogg? Was that ever like a goal or a bucket list thing for you to? Do? Um, well, once I started, once I found out what the UFC was, like at first, like when I first started fighting, I didn't even know. Like you, I didn't even know about. I mean, I knew of the UFC, but it was never like a thought. I just, but once I started like winning fights and started thinking about getting the UFC, um, I never thought I'd be smoking with Snoop. It just worked out perfect. Nice, That's awesome. Now, were there were there some pretty hot bitches? Was the crazy hot bitches? No, there actually wasn't. It was just because it was. Um, we just went back to his trailer, so it was right outside the Ultimate Fighter gym. Oh, okay. And I was just like. So it was just like me, him, a couple of his bodyguards, and uh, yeah. So there that's wasn't still any pretty dope. That's still pretty dope, but that's still awesome. I would be hoping for some girls gone wild action or something. You know what I mean? Well, he's I not, know. Well, I mean, you got a serious awesome. girlfriend, right? I mean, if you guys are moving in together, how long have you been together for? Uh, over two years. Oh, that's nice. Not nice. Did you meet uh, her? Did you meet her in Arizona? Yeah, I did. I met her in Arizona. Yeah. Uh, you got a lot of pretty girls out there in Arizona, man. The hottest chick. So oh, hot. Like, yeah. Uh, you go to a strip club. It's like, hot. Not enough of them work at <laughs> the strip clubs, though. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Those ASU girls are just insane. Yeah, we, I, maybe I'm going to the wrong yeah, strip clubs in, in Arizona. There's some hot bitches here for sure. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, I mean, you're, now you, I mean, you're, you're, you're killing it. Um, now, I always thought like wrestling was going to be maybe your Achilles heel because of, the, of like your, your karate stance and that. Do you think that's the one? Right. Thing, do you think that's the one thing that you have to work on the most? Um, I I don't know about the most. I think I I enjoy like if if I could pick on something I could do for the day that I like, would enjoy the most, it'd probably probably be grappling. Um, I love jujitsu. I love um I love grappling. It's one of my favorite things. Like all week like my favorite practice are the grappling practices so that's not even something i really think like oh i gotta make sure i'm working on it. it's like that's just something i work on all the time and you know i've i didn't even know how to wrestle three years ago and now i feel like i'm a pretty decent wrestler um you know i got three takedowns in the third round um so but but yeah no that, that was if, awesome if, if that's gonna be what it is so no i was i was super impressed and you know what it was man like you won the first round I, I, you could give Terry on the second, although I can give you the second also. It was one of those fights where I could, I, I could see it going the way. But that third round, like I was, people were like, "Oh, O'Malley's gonna gas. O'Malley's gonna gas." You came out even stronger. Like you, it was really impressive. Thank you. Yeah, I felt. Uh, I knew. Like I fucking trained hard. I knew I was gonna be. In, I knew I was. My body was in shape. I had been doing. I've been sparring three rounds. You know. For the in in camp, so I knew I could go three rounds, and I knew I could push. I don't know, I just gasped. Where I got my second win, though, and then I uh, felt felt really good. Oh man, I was I was super impressed, man. I mean, uh, I was a fan before. I'm even a bigger fan now, uh, especially because you knocked out. Ed so knocked out Edmonds guy. Oh, uh, the fight you, yeah, that. and you hate Edmonds. No, Ed, Edmonds the worst. That's the West guy's the worst coach in history of coaching. Um, now what? I mean, who who, who do you want to fight next? Um, I'm not exactly sure who we're gonna fight next. Um, but I still, we have a couple a uh, couple options. I was thinking, you know, that Bonito Lopez looks pretty good. He's nine and zero. I don't know if they want to do contender winners versus contender winners. Um, or that um that one kid who just knocked out uh, Luke Sanders. Oh yeah. Yeah, that yeah, fucking yeah. dork. I don't know his name. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. I know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that was that was impressive because Luke Sanders is is a good fighter. Uh, yeah, I thought Luke was gonna win that fight. I think Luke beats that kid nine out of ten times, but uh, you know, he got caught. That kid was on a two fight losing streak. Took short notice fight. Stepped up and 
it paid off for him. So, yeah. you know, props Andre, for that. Andre, Andre Sukhamstaff. Or something. Well yeah. said. That's probably right. Yeah. That's probably exactly how that's pronounced. Su- suck it, <laughs> suck it, math. Andre, that's yeah. more. That's more likely. He's an Asian guy. Who yeah. Sucks math. Of course, he's a fighter. Yeah, the Asian sensation, dude. Yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The cool, Asian man. Asian sensation. So, I mean, are you sure you want to get? A, should you be married first before you buy a house with a girl? What's that? Well, I mean, shouldn't you be married before you buy the house? I mean, you're buying a house with this girl. Yeah. Are you gonna marry her? Oh yeah, I don't, I'm. We'll see. Mary, I don't really think like uh, that word's kind of stupid. I think. I think that's kind of a. I don't know. We're just going with the flow. There you go. I love that's her. right, kid. Me. Ride Fuck. it out. I told my wife the same thing, just, and uh, yeah, I. I, I <laughs> it, it didn't. That didn't work that well for me, man. Yeah. But. Uh, <laughs> no, she. We both kind of think the same about marriage. You know, I don't know. We're. I mean, we both I mean, love each other. We're just going with the flow. I mean, you're definitely like how many how many women though have seen you on TV and the way you fight and the way you look and have tried to get in on that? Uh, have, have, you, have you been getting a lot of chicks? A lot of a lot of a lot of. Oh games? yeah, that it's it's hard. Yeah, I got some people just straight. Some chicks just straight up sent me nude, which is sweet. You know, I'm not, that's nothing. I can't do anything about that. So if they want to do that, that's fine with me. But yeah, a lot right, of chicks exactly. Can't you can't do nothing up. about that. If your pants fall down around exactly. your ankles, and you just start that girl can't whacking mad at me off that. to them. That's just natural. That's. I mean, just... but what does your wife say? Exactly. Girls, I mean, is, is like your wife like, why are you sending my boyfriend nudes? <clears throat> nah, she fucking she doesn't even think that much into it. She's we're we're good. We're she doesn't care really. Like yeah. it happens, it happens. Can I tell you something, bro? This is serious. I mean, I've do, I've been on TV dozens of times. I performed stand up, a lot of standing ovations. Never have I had chicks <laughs> randomly sending me dudes. It's like I got, I don't know. I, 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 I got a lot of you're super funny. You know, you gotta learn a, how to a, throw a, a wheel kick. I I gotta throw learn how to throw a wheel kick. There yeah, you go. of course. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You I can throw a wheel yet? kick, but it's me actually yeah, oh, kicking yeah. a wheel. Snapchat? Uh, no, I specifically don't That's have Snapchat. You get no tip pics. Yeah, you got You got to get Snapchat. You got to get the kid. You got to get your Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's where it's all. Th- That's Snapchat. why I stay away from it, actually, because I'm afraid shit's going to go down on Snapchat, and I don't want nothing to do that it. That is a good idea. Are you, are you smoking weed right me. now? You sound like you're pretty high. Uh, I, I just took a, t- yeah, I'm making some food, smoking, <laughs> chilling. Good for you. Yes, brother, it's Saturday. Live y'all dreams. <laughs> this is like my favorite kid ever. Exactly. We're gonna, yeah. This kid's I'm chill. Just, he gets it. I you like guys this in kid. New York? That's where you guys are? No, I'm, I'm, it's a New York number. I'm from, I'm from New York, but we live in California now. But, uh, oh, wow. but I'm going to be in Arizona in June. I'm doing a comedy show at the House of Comedy. Last time, uh, John Crouch came and uh, Lauren Murphy oh, and yeah. uh, Barbara Reyna. So I would love to see you in, uh, in uh, June, my friend. Dude, hell yeah. You said June? Yeah, in June. So. Okay, hopefully I'll be fighting March 3rd. And then, I'll, and then yeah, that'd be, that'd be perfect. I'd definitely come. We, me and my girl would come for sure. I love it. I love it. Well, dude, thanks for being on the podcast. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday, man. Happy holidays. Hell yeah, you guys too. Thanks. Take care. Yeah, man. Merry Christmas. Bye. That's a nice kid. No, he's a good kid. <laughs> like, like, most like you would not think fighter when you see that kid down the street with that hair. I don't know. I think uh, maybe you do because really? I have a feeling he had to learn to fight pretty early on. In 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 uh, Montana. Yeah. Yeah, he, that's a fucking that's a badass kid right there. Yeah. I just that just shows you though you never know who can fight. His first fight was probably against a bobcat. <laughs> up in Montana he's like he's fighting a bobcat in a river at the same time the kid's so funny man yeah so funny so uh how, how are you doing man how, how, how was your week everything's good man what happened nothing this week I, oh well we had the table reads you know I got cast in a show for Amazon and yes we don't know uh what's you know we're doing a pilot and we had the big table read for all the Amazon executives and is, that, is, that, is that nervous though it, 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 yeah, here's the thing they had like they had like all a couple seats saved for them marked Amazon right yeah. like 10 chairs I'm like okay so like 10 that sounds right like 40 people from Amazon showed up for this table read. Really? And what happened was it made the room really hot. 
So we're reading this, we're reading the pilot and it's just getting hotter and hotter and hotter in there. And like my character doesn't come into like page 39. Okay. Uh, and so, so I'm sitting there just roasting in my own juices and I'm looking around like, is anyone else hot? Am I, am I getting nervous? What's happening? Like it was a very physically uncomfortable situation. And then finally it got to my part. I banged it out. It got some laughs. I was fine. I was glad it got laughs. I mean, it got huge laughs in the first read. Then it got just decent laughs in the second read, but it still did very well. Did you read the same way or not? Uh, no, exactly the same. I tried to keep it exactly the same. Right. Uh, and so, and, and then, uh, and then that was it. And then, and then, you know, that's the thing afterwards, you just leave. Like there's no feedback or anything. right. There's no resolution. There's no a hey, notes from no, nothing like that. I mean, I'm sure for the for the creators and writers of the show there is, but not for us. So we just leave and hope that we did great. You know, like so I'm just driving home. Sell. You know, of course I always treat myself to a joint. Uh, you know when yeah. I you know like wait good work Greg you earned this one. Right. <laughs> so I'm in the parking lot fucking <laughs> just burning out. It's like okay okay that was fine. It went fine. It went great. It went fine. It went great because there's no feedback. You know? Yeah, that's the thing about comedy is that you get the immediate feedback. Immediately, you tell joke, which is both good and bad. You either laugh or not. It's, right. And at auditions, you don't. They either, like, sometimes you do an audition and they don't laugh at all. Right. And then you book it or they laugh hysterically. And you either book it or you hear nothing. Like, yeah. you just never hear anything. And so oh. you have to sit there. And the weird thing is, like, I've had things come back around weeks later after I've written them off. Yeah. And be like, oh, by the way, you're the choice. I'm like, what the fuck? I thought that was gone. And because of stupid situations like that, you can then, when you don't hear something immediately, you can convince yourself, well, you know, maybe uh, oh. maybe they didn't have a chance to meet about it yet. Maybe someone's still looking at it. And you just go, and so you torture yourself day after day, uh, and then you're like, 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 well, it shot yesterday, so nah, it probably went. I've, probably I've like, else. I've cried in my car after audition. <laughs> I have. I was like, that you never should have told another person. I that. don't care. You, what uh, a puss. I yeah. You've cried. Why? Cried. Well, and that's the thing because you want it. I've cried and punched the fucking steering right. wheel. Uh, and like, Fucking call the people. Ah, I hate this fucking. What am I doing with my life? That's and, the problem. Is when you want see guys that don't need it. And don't want it so, but I feel like they do great because they go in there totally. It's like whatever, I'm gonna. Fly. And then those are the guys that they're like, that guy, he's crazy. A, we go in there with, with such a desire to it's win. Like, it's like vagina. It's like yeah, when you try like, too hard, you lose it. It's like and, when you don't care whether the girl likes you. Get you get all or the not, puss. You get all the puss. Exactly, and it's the same thing with situations like that. I always try and tell myself, remember, they need you. They need you. Not the other way Same around. Same thing with audiences sometimes. It's like, yeah. You, like, you have to like not care if they, you have to pretend that you don't care if they laugh or not and they'll laugh. You know what I do? Like if someone crushes, even though I know I can do it, even though I've done it a million times, you still realize I'm following a guy that just crushed. What I do on the way to the stage, I'll tell myself, Greg, it's zero, zero. The score is zero, zero. Because if you think about it in terms of the score being a hundred to zero, yeah. then you try too hard thinking you have to dig yourself out of a hole that doesn't really exist. Right. No. You know? So I tell myself that and it kind of resets the energy. Greg, don't worry, it's zero, zero. Well, you know what I think you need? I think, listen, buddy, I think you need fuegobox.com. Oh, without question. Everyone's done all the standard gift items, clothes, cologne, a nice bottle of liquor, done, done, done. We've got something different and much better than any of those this holiday season. Do you put hot sauce on everything? Yes. I, I do. I, yeah. I love hot sauce. Everything. If so, it's time to check out Fuego Box, a hot sauce club that delivers boxes of small batch and gourmet hot sauces right to your doorstep. They focus on flavor over heat and always avoid gimmicky selections. Think of it as a hot sauce club for people who love food. I know you love food. Look at me. Here you go. So to purchase, go to FuegoBox.com and use code GASTRO for $10 off your first box. That's FuegoBox.com, promo code, check it out, uh, for $10 off, uh, use, uh, use the promo code GASTRO uh, for $10 off, the best hot sauce you've probably never heard of. Check it out, FuegoBox.com. Hello? Hello? What up? Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Good. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, we are talking to Jared Flash Gordon. All right. Uh, a man who is... 14 and 1. Wow. Uh, yes. Yes, sugar. Yeah. Oh, this is sugar again. Oh, sorry, man. I'm calling you back. Oh, oh sorry, Sean. Uh, I'll, well, I'll talk to you soon, brother. All right. Take care, brother. You're not to know. Thanks, buddy. All right. So, that, 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 all right. Here we go. We're, now, we're, now, we're, now we're really calling Jared Flash Gordon. Uh, here we go. Uh, was that Sean O'Malley? Yeah, that was Sean O'Malley. That was nice of him to pick up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is a, I like that kid. 
I th- I think we should might- send him a Fuego box. Yes, I think he might be my new favorite fighter. He's great. He's 9-0? Yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. 9-0 with six knockouts. Wow. Yeah, he's got fucking power. Power. We'll see if this works. Yeah, they killed all the jacks, all the inputs, everything. And they do it just to make fucking Now money. the new one doesn't even have a home screen. Really? Yeah, the Tatten. Like the home button, rather. There's no home button. Like it just, I don't know. I guess you just go to it or something. I don't, I don't know. I got to do a uh, Christmas party later. Can I tell you something? I'm considering switching to Samsung because I'm supposed to do an upgrade right now on this phone. Yeah. I'm supposed to get the latest one. I'm supposed to go to either the 8 or the 10 because uh, I'm on like that iPhone forever program. Um, but I mean, the more advances they make, I don't know. It seems more daunting to me. Like the 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 Samsung Note seems more intuitive, seems simpler to use. I don't know. I'm considering switching over. You should. Yeah, to the Galaxy. To the I don't know, but then you got to do. I, I you got to learn. I I don't want to have to relearn. Shit. I think it's the same. I think it's, really? Yeah. Plus that I have a Mac, and I don't like it sharing everything between my phone and the Mac. I like them to be separate. Worlds. It always tells me I I I've. I never know my passwords because I always change them, and, and I have like thirty different passwords for everything. Yeah, and then I and then I have to like either have to email me the new password, and then you I you gotta reset like, it. And I gotta do that fucking like, like, captcha thing, and yeah. then I have to like, and they give you quizzes of like how many street signs are in this. Oh, like, I hate the street sign the thing. I'm like, fuck along. Well, I mean, there's a tiny little sliver of it in this one. Does this count? Yeah, I, mean, I know, I right? It's, it's never like in the box. Yeah. It's always in a sliver and a fucking. Yeah, I know. I'm like, do you want me to check that? Is that the test then to yeah. see if you see the sliver in the other box? Yeah, it's so annoying. And then the captcha has like. So even the letters are like it's a you can't tell if it's a capital J or a lowercase J or like yeah. a K or is it an L or an I? It's just such a pain in the ass. Yeah, they're like, oh no, that's wrong. It's like really okay. Let's try it again. Is nobody, that, nobody wants my information. Is that an R N or an M? Nobody's I can't hacking tell. into my shit. Nobody yeah. wants uh, people looking at my bank account and get depressed. Dude, okay? I almost got fished today. Really? I got a thing. It was like, oh, you know, this processed out of your PayPal, this payment to this company for $69. And I'm like, what? And, and then there's a box at the bottom. It's like, you know, to contest this charge, you know, click here if this wasn't you. And so I click it and it goes right. To, and so it looked exactly like a PayPal email. And then I clicked it and it went to a, a website, which looked like the PayPal login. And I was like, wait a minute. What the fuck is this shit? Uh, so then I quickly I went I went into my actual PayPal account via the app and there were no transactions uh, listed. And I was like, oh, these motherfuckers. I almost gave them my total login for PayPal. I hate people. So then I sent that email to PayPal. And I hate PayPal. It takes 50. Like I got a $1,500 thing for PayPal. I take out 50 bucks. I'm like, what did they do? It's yeah. $50. They, that's their percentage, man. Fucking high percentage. Got to pay the. That's why everyone moved over to uh to Venmo because Venmo doesn't take anything out. Really? Yeah. But people don't have Venmo. Well, that's why because well, Venmo is more of like a personal one as opposed to a commercial one. Everybody's on PayPal or Square may take a little bit less than PayPal, but it takes some too. I mean, but that's then how they Venmo make money. tells me what everyone else is doing. Like, yeah, I, I know. Care. You like, gotta... Andrea gave this guy a sixty bucks. I don't give a fuck. Totally. What? And it's and it's all drug transactions. Half of it is fucking drugs and the other half is gambling. Like it's all it's like, leave me alone. Yeah, I, I know. That's the thing. It's like, can we kill the social component? Like, can we just, they're trying to make it like a social financial thing at the same time and it makes no sense. Even when I take money out, they're like, you want to check your balance? No. Like, don't ask me. Yeah. I know how much money I don't have. Yeah. Like, like, I don't need to check my balance all of a sudden. I love it when I get money on PayPal and then you want to withdraw. They're like, all right, how much you want to withdraw? I'm like, fucking all of it. Yeah, what are you no, talking no. About. I'm going to keep stuff for you. Yeah, let me just leave you a little something and you do whatever you want with that. I know it makes no... Is anybody not withdrawing the full amount? Yeah, I know. Who so, the fuck's just leaving all their money on PayPal? It's so dumb. It's so dumb. I got to do a, uh, a Christmas show later. Yeah. Another one of these private parties. Yeah. It pays really well, but the last one I got yanked during my set by the person... Because I get there, they're like, it's a... It's a <laughs> It's a car. It's a car dealership. What in Cam- happens during your show? It's a man, car dealership yeah. in Camarillo, right? Okay. So I, their Christmas party. It's okay. all Mexican. Yeah. So I go, hey, you mind if I keep it? Like, if I, if it's, uh, you know, just make them laugh, right? Like, just make them laugh. Like five minutes in, the guy goes, hey, could you tone it down? But he comes. To, first of all, there's no mic. Uh, the mic's going in and out on every oh. on every punchline. There's no stage. Yeah. They're serving food uh, from a buffet. Oh, this is the worst. Not even from. Uh, and it's then a tough setup. And then. That I'm going on during the food at six o'clock. Yeah. Right. And like no. And then she goes, "This is my announcement, guys. Guess what? We don't have a magician this year. We have a surprise. A comedian. No name or credits. Just comedian. Just here's comedian. And then like, and then the guy comes up to me after like thirty minutes, and he goes, "Hey man, 
I'll give you the full amount plus a hundred dollars if you stop now. Like he was, he was like, he was like, don't worry, I'll pay you and I'll, everything. You don't do any. He's like, he's like, we don't want to offend anybody else. I go, who here is offended? Uh, no, and no one raised their hand. And I'm like, see, this, but Captain, Captain offense here doesn't want me to offend anybody. God forbid. And then I gave, oh, a, I gave a whole shit. speech. On, uh, you know, like state of comedy at that point. Uh, and it was no one spoke English. Someone's like, do you? So he didn't give you the extra hundred dollars. No, he did. He gave me extra hundred dollars. Oh my god. But what a fucking disaster oh that was. Oh my god. But that was even like the worst. And your set isn't even that dirty. Like you can do a really clean set. I know. Like just jokey, joke I, to joke. I, of course, it wasn't even dirty. I, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing a show. Uh, I'm doing Did you sh- crowd work? Is that what yeah, happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was the, the jokes weren't going over, so I was like, I'll just make fun of people individually, and then that was was making them laugh. Right, that always works. But then he was like, Oh my god, he's talking to us. Oh no, shut it down, shut it down. Yeah, I know. And then, then, then the guy was like, You're out of here. Like he was like a like a fake umpire. Yeah. And then he was the boss. And then I was ripping on him, but everyone was afraid to laugh at him. One of the worst oh shows gosh. I did was a college show where it was like brought to you by the cancer benefit. So they had a video of like all these kids who with had cancer, cancer first. Yeah. And, and now then, some jokes. And then at the end they were like, rest in peace, every kid in the video. And, oh and they, my God. So then the lights come on and everyone's crying. And then, <laughs> and then I got to do my, my set after yeah. that. It was just, that wasn't even like, I've done baby showers while the woman's still pregnant and, and just like. You get a lot of random gigs, man. Yeah, I, I don't know. know. I, I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So, but I mean, but those are always the funniest stories. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the, the wedding, getting attacked at the wedding was still like my, one of my favorites. Dude, that was classic. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, uh, yeah, I got to do the Christmas party and then, uh, I don't know. So, all right. Uh, MMA news, this MMA podcast. Uh, Eric, my buddy uh, Anders, Eric Anders, called out Machida in Brazil. He's fighting Machida in Brazil. Look, I think Leona Machida. I think he's done. He got knocked out by Derek um, yeah. uh, Brunson quickly. At a certain point, it's just diminishing returns. And yeah. What does he have to prove? Uh, good for Eric Anders, though. Um, Did his brother lose his last fight, too? Yeah, the uh, to the Irish kid. Yeah, in like in like Bellator. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I watched yeah. that fight. I'm like, oh my god, here comes the This is one of the. Machi-. I'm telling my fiance about this too, who really doesn't care, but she lets me talk at her during these things while yeah. she reads. I'm like, he's one of the Machida brothers, brothers the Oda Machida, the dragon. He was the, the champ for a while and all this. I'm like, this guy's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders. Then he got fucking beaten. I'm like. Well, I guess it doesn't all just run in the family. I guess, uh, <laughs> guess uh, all the good genes ended with Leo. My my uh, my wife still like uh, I'll be like uh, he he came on the podcast. She's like wow, like she doesn't she does not care at all. Like, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it just that's doesn't... right. They don't have to care so long as they let me talk. You know what I mean? Let us, let us talk. That's all that matters. Uh, McGregor versus Mayweather was the second biggest pay per view ever. Um, yeah, that's why they did it. Which shows you how. That's why Donald Trump's our president. Uh, this is Pretty the, much. Sa- the same people uh, who believe that McGregor was going to beat Mayweather uh, or, and paid for it. But you know what? I mean, now McGregor says today in TMZ he's going back into MMA. Uh, we actually have him on the phone. Uh, Connor, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing there? It's fine to be back on MMA Roasted. Now, are, are you still going to be... Uh, now, they said that you're the, the second biggest. Are you proud of this? I mean, you you, you, you didn't beat Mayweather um, uh, Pacquiao. But you... Which surprised me because, to be honest, ours was much more of a fight. The one with Pacquiao, he was a thousand years old. No one needs to pay to see a small little man beat up on an elderly person. Now, I did have you winning the first four rounds uh, of, the Magre- of the Mayweather fight. That was very impressive. Thank you very much. I thought I won them all. When he stopped the fight, I couldn't believe it. I had so much more to give. You were out on your feet. Well, listen. <laughs> what can I say? I still, I felt pretty good. Sure, I was seeing stars, but there were a lot of celebrities there. Now, I thought that at one point you had a body shot that they called a low blow. But I thought you actually hurt um, uh, Mayweather, but they didn't give you the... It seemed like they said they called it a low blow. I thought it was bullshit. Well, it was all bullshit. Now, um, you, now, there was a thing of you dating this, uh, this singer, this big singer in Australia. What's her name? Uh, she said date night. Um, I forgot the girl's name. Uh, but, but you have a wife and ki- or a girlfriend and kid. What, what's going on? Listen, I'm Conor McGregor. I got three girls underneath my nutsack as we speak. Really? That's right. Right now. You those, and those are not even my side chicks. They're my emergency under the nutsack chicks. Wow. Now, but doesn't your wife, I mean, somebody seems like a very nice woman. She's a, a very pretty one. Do you know her? Uh, no, no, Rita Ora. Rita Ora says that like date night with McGregor at the Fashion Awards. So was that, a, did you bang Rita Ora? Of course I banged her. I banged her before we left. I banged her during the awards and I banged her on the limo ride home. Wow. That's that's crazy. That's right. But I don't even remember her name. You had to tell me. 
You don't remember Rita Ora's name? Hitty, 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 hitty. Now, uh, by the way... Uh, by the way, that's the sound I make when I have an orgasm. Now, now, CB Gold... Hitty, hitty, hitty. Uh, CB Gold just showed up. CB, where, where were you, CB? Uh, I, was, uh, I was busy getting a Connor tattoo on my taint. Wow, on your taint. That's right. No. It now looks... Now Connor's hair is actually my pubes. And then... I, I when I when I spread eagle, it's like it's like he's trying to cough. It looks like McGregor's trying to cough when he's spread eagle. That's right, because his mouth is my butthole. My wow. pubes are his hair, and his mouth is my butthole, that, that, and his nose is right between my butthole and my balls. I mean, this is getting kind of out of control, CB. I mean, you have, now this is your sixth McGregor tattoo. But now, when I'm taking a shit, I'm also talking shit. Wow, that, that's true. You are talking shit now. Um, now you you have a girlfriend now. Does she like your McGregor tattoo? Oh, oh, she loves one. In fact, I uh, I got one for her too. Oh, she has a tattoo of McGregor. Yes, over her face. <laughs> really? That's right. So I'm officially. Making out with Conor McGregor. Wow. Now, the, you see, your girlfriend has a McGregor tattoo on her face. Now, now, don't you be getting my face on your girlfriend's face just so you can be making out with me. You don't deserve this Irish gold. Now, now CB, uh, now, McGregor, you've met CB. What do you think of him? I don't know CB. He's just one of those random people I always have to have security removed from my salad. <laughs> From your salad. That's right. Yeah, that's that's right. I actually got caught in. I, w- I was pretending to be a crouton in in his Caesar salad. Really? But I, I mean, you're a big guy. How did you fit in the salad? I, my face was actually up through the table. Uh, I dug. I had, I had cut a hole in the table and was. Un- and then when he moved, that's right. I moved the salad away, and there's this creep's face smiling at me. Wow. So you're not a fan of CB Gold. I don't know him. I don't like him. I don't want to know him. All right. Okay. Except of course when he does do my asshole bleaching. He bleaches your asshole. For that's you? right. That's what he does. He bleaches my. A- uh, well, it isn't actually a bleach. I, what I do is I I put a little Clorox on my tongue, and then I and then I I, I give it a good uh, you know a tongue massage. I tongue dart it until it's nice and clean. Well, I mean, CB, this is kind of ridiculous. I mean, I mean, the fact that you're 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 you know licking McGregor's asshole. This is that's insane. Uh, what can I say? It's it's my dream job. Wow. All right. Okay. Was, it, was that him, by the way? I don't know. That's. What... <laughs> I tell you what. Oh, okay. That, you that need was... to get back to doing your podcast. Okay. All right. Okay. Because you finally had the fucker call in and you didn't bother to answer the fucking phone. That's true. I... Oh, take care, Connor. Take care, CB. All right. I'll see you later. I got to go do his butthole business. All right. Okay. Good. Bleach. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So now we are calling uh, Jared Brooks. <laughs> finally, see if he, this actually works. Ah, uh, technology, man. It's going great. It was going now. Now yeah, it was going great. Now, 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 now Rowdy Beck. Uh, it actually, she lost her last fight yeah. against Jesse Jess, who's fighting Jesse Jess, hot chick. You remember Jesse Jess? She's this hot chick with a face tattoo that, like, I like I a little one. Oh, yeah, 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 she was yeah. my cat sitter as well. Uh, super cool chick. Uh, so Jess is now fighting um the the pretty one, Paige Van Zant. Uh-huh. But uh, but Rowdy Beck, you know, she lost her last fight. That's now two in a row. Uh, we have her on the fine. Uh, how are you, Rowdy? I tell you, it's been quite a bit of trouble trying to get back into the ring. Uh, uh, well, you got in the ring. You were in the, you were in the octagon. That's what I was doing. <laughs> now, it's been very hard ever since my last defeat. Now, now you lost you lost a fight. It was a close fight. Yeah. Uh, did you think you won that fight? Of course I felt I won. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny, Rowdy Beck? You seem to be, you seem to be laughing a lot. I, uh, I, I, I seem to have eaten a... <laughs> What a fat burner? Is that what happened again? It's uh, he haven't done. I haven't had a chance to talk to anyone in quite some time. <laughs> wow. All right. Okay. All right. Well, listen, Rowdy Beck. You know, you got to get yourself together. Uh, uh, I'm a big fan of yours, Rowdy Beck. Uh, do you have a boyfriend? Are you seeing anybody? I'm seeing everybody. You're fucking everybody. Everybody, but you eat him. Oh yeah. Well, I, I'm married now, but uh, I, I would have liked to back when I was single. That would have been a, a good time. Then why did you text me just last week? I did not text you. You texted me how much you wanted to eat me out. No, I did not. I would not text you. Maybe that. as long as two weeks ago. Wow. All should right. Should I tweet it? I should tweet it to you, to your new wife. Go. Uh, yeah. Please tweet it. That'll, that'll, that'll go very well. <laughs> that'll go very well. All right. I think we have uh, the man right here. 
I, I think we have Jared Gordon. This is this show will be called like. Yeah, I feel like I feel like we should all apologize for that last bit. That yeah, was like, well, for Rowdy back. Yeah. No, poor, I mean she was. She's obviously Rowdy. she wants me to eat her vagina. She's so hot though. Oh, this is not. Oh shit. Oh, okay, it was, that's a different number. Okay, this We're is trying. You know how like this like waiting for Guffman. This is like waiting for Gordon. Right here. Uh, I knew. Uh, well, he was calling, and I knew we needed to answer it. I know, but like. Uh, I couldn't get Connor to shut up though. I know. That well. Guy. Well, I thought maybe maybe you had a you had a you had you had, you had, a, you had a phone call or something. All right. Uh, there you go. Check it out. Yeah. Uh-huh. How's your fantasy football team doing, dude? Can I tell you something? I'm so mad. Why? This is the first year in years that I'm I've been knocked out of the playoffs in the first round. Really. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a game I absolutely should have won. Don't don't you have a podcast about how yes. about how, how 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 good you are? Can I tell you not about but how good why, I am? Just breaking, just you know, just analyzing it. And usually, I, you know, last year I won one league and played in the championship of the other. And did you make any money on this? <laughs> yeah, you know, I make a little bit in daily fantasy. I mean, I've yet to hit a big pot. I think the most I won was like. I don't know, thirty-one dollars, I think once, but so, but I consistently win like eight dollars here, five dollars there, um, so I don't really have to spend any money on it. It always kind of makes it so it kind of evens out. Yeah, yeah. You know, I never really get too far up or too far down. Just, but you know, so I just I love it. And I'm a big enthusiast, but you know, I, I and I've said it before. You know, your season is kind of won and lost on draft day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, who, who who? Hello. Hey, is this Jared? This is him. What's going on, man? We finally got you. How are you, buddy? Sorry about that. I'm doing well. How you doing? It's okay, man. It's okay. Uh, I, I've, I'm a huge fan of yours, by the way. I've been watching your fights. I've been following your life, man. I, you've, uh, you've had some fucking. How, how old are you? Twenty nine. I mean, you you've lived the life of uh, of of like twenty people, man. You've. It's crazy. Uh, so let's let, let's get it. So you grew up in uh, in uh, Queens. Yeah, uh, I grew up in Long Island as like a kid, and then well, I moved to Queens uh, later on, like when I was like fifteen. What part of Long Island? I was in uh, Nassau County in uh, Roslyn. Uh, Roslyn. I'm I'm from Oceanside. Oh, really? That's funny. Small world. Roslyn's a really nice area. A super rich area. Yeah, yeah. My dad's uh, my dad's a Jewish business owner. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, there you go. Um, sure. Okay. So you, so, so you, uh, you, you uh, grew up. Did you do any kind of combat sports as a kid, or did you, did you play any sports? Um, I boxed and wrestled as a kid. I wrestled when I was in uh, in school over there, and then when I moved to Queens, there was like no wrestling programs in the city. What, what, which, uh, what high school? Did you go to uh, Cordoza? I went to. Um, it's a it's a public high school open to all of the uh, the boroughs. It's called it's called Academy of American Studies. Oh wow! Um, yeah, it's just like a regular. It's just a high school, but it's just open to all the boroughs. So you kind of have to like apply to get accepted there. But oh, it's nice. in uh, it's in like Queensboro Plaza, like right next to Queensbridge. So it was a pretty seedy area when I went to school over there. Wait, was it was it hard being the uh, new kid in school coming from Roslyn over to over to Queens? It was weird, man. You know, I thought that, like, when I went to school in Roslyn, like, all the kids were, like, actually, like, a bunch of dirtbags. They, mo- they all had money, and they were all into, you know, doing stupid shit. So when I, was, when I went to Queens, I was like, wow, the kids are going to be killers over here. And, man, you know, everyone grew up in, like, a poor neighborhood, and they all, they all were working hard to, uh, to get out of there. Like, they wanted to do well in school and, like, go to college and stuff, so... When I went there, I was like, I was like, whoa, this is weird. Like, everyone's like a good person here. So <laughs> it, was, it was a bit of a culture shock because, you know, I went to school with predominantly, like, white kids, like Italian, Irish, and, and like, you know, Jewish kids. So when I went to, when I moved to Queens, you know, it was like, you know, it was, uh, I, I was the minority at that point. I bet, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, yeah. Ma- that makes that makes sense. And then, uh, you so you started at 17 years old. You worked into you walked into your first MMA gym. Yes, I walked into. Uh, it was combined martial arts, but it was uh, the Rhino Fight Team. Um, Frankie Edgar started there. A bunch of other guys started there. Uh, yeah, I walked in there and uh, I signed up for boxing and uh, jujitsu and. Four months later, I had my first amateur fight. Damn. 
Damn. I mean, that, that, but you but you had some wrestling background, so you uh, you yeah, some boxing and wrestling background. So I, I caught on quick, but nice. And then and then like no college, graduated high school. You knew right then you wanted to be a fighter. Yep, exactly. That's exactly how it went. That's awesome. And then I, I was reading about you. So like you you know you you you, you won your first couple fights. Uh, you got into it. You were you was totally into it. And then you uh, you fought a guy Jeff Lentz, and you were in such. And then they after that you were prescribed pain medication, right? Well, for your shoulder or your what was it? Well, I was addicted to drugs way before Jeff. I uh, I started doing drugs at an early age, and then it progressed as I got older. But I hurt my neck when I was like 18 before I ever became a pro fighter, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I started doing pain medication then. So. I, I used, I used, I used, and then I started like doing Oxycontin and sniffing them and then shooting them. And, and I, I got clean. I was clean for two years, had a shoulder surgery, relapsed, got another year and a half, and then I fought, got another year and a half clean, and then I fought Jeff Flint. So I was already deep into uh, like trying to get sober and addiction at that point. So, I mean, but when I fought Jeff, yeah. Uh, you know, he, broke my orbital and uh, I was in the head trauma unit were giving me IV Dilaudid, which is, you know, basically heroin. Yeah. I was clean a year and a half and I'm a fucking, excuse my language, I'm a, I'm a dope shooter. So when I went from being clean, you know, to shooting, basically shooting dope again, I came out and I had, uh, I basically felt like I had no other option but to get high again. <laughs> right. Wow. But now, yeah. now, now who turned you on to heroin? Um, man, that's a good question. I just, actually, you know what? It was more or less myself. I, I was already shooting, you know, like every other pain medication that you can shoot. Um, but I was living in Queens and, you know, everyone over here was like, oh, we don't have painkillers, but, you know, we sell heroin. So I actually knew some people in the neighborhood. I just asked around a couple, like a little bit. And I knew that heroin was cheaper and stronger. So I actually bought heroin on my own accord and uh started using it on my own really well they, that's what they say happens a lot of times is that it starts with the prescriptions and then it's just easier to get heroin than to go keep trying to find the, pres the prescriptions yeah yeah it's, it's i was doing the whole doctor shopping thing right. you know selling them and you know i was going to doctors and getting people to go to doctors and eventually that all ran out because it started cracking down. The doctors started getting arrested. The pills became more expensive. And who wants to spend all that money on pills when you can buy cheaper, stronger heroin? Yeah, no. I, was, I mean, look, I have a lot of family members that, that, are, that are into that. And it's kind of the same thing. It was, it was painkillers to, to, to heroin. Now, as far yeah. as uh, training, like, were you still going to the gym and training while shooting up and taking this stuff? Yeah, I was doing it on and off. I would... Even when I was an amateur, when I was like 17, 18, I would, I would like, you know, eat like 20 Vicodin, 15 Vicodin, go to fight. And then I would like, you know, later on in my addiction, I, I would start like training. I'd be getting high. Then I would be out of the gym. I would be in the gym. You know, I was like in and out, in and out. So it was like hit or miss with me. I was either in the gym or I wasn't. Or I was getting high, going to the, you know, it just was on and off, really. And and then what are your coaches saying to you at this time? Oh man, I have um, it's funny actually. I'm actually in Atlantic City right now at the Borgata. I'm gonna watch uh, the CFFC event tonight. Uh, whatever. So I remember one time I was here at the Borgata, and I was supposed to fight uh, this kid Bill Algio. Um, and this was to a little over two years ago and I was uh I was shooting dope man and I was in the tub trying to cut weight and man I had some my coaches and the president of CFFC they saw my arms and I was they were all tracked up and they were like are you kidding us you know and and uh our coach my coach uh he doesn't take shit man he's like a no shit type of guy uh he did give me a couple of chances to get my act together but uh he's pretty adamant about me staying sober and he doesn't want to he doesn't want to deal with me because he doesn't want to condone my my bullshit you know so my coaches are uh they know all about my my addiction and everyone my managers my fan you know everyone knows about my past so 
they're all they're all on top of me. Like any if any time I act funny, any bit of like oh uh, Jared seems weird today, they ask me, Are you alright? Like how's everything going? Like, you know, so I can tell when 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 they're on to me. <laughs> yeah, funny. so you got a good support system happening now. Oh yeah, I got a huge support network. Uh you know, the first couple times I got sober, even when I had like, you know, a year or two I wasn't really like doing anything to keep myself sober besides fighting. I was, I wasn't going to meetings. You know, I go to, I go to AA meetings. I have a spot, an AA sponsor. I help other people, you know, try to stay clean. And uh, so, like, I have to do something every day to keep myself sober because, like, for me, I don't just like you know smoke pot and 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 drink a little alcohol. I'm like shooting coke and heroin, you know. So I have to, Oof. I have to keep everything up front, you know. Yeah. I mean, dude, you're a very, very inspiring guy. I mean, you went to rehab 10 times. I, I, after like the, the seventh time or eighth time where people just sort of like, oh, okay, yeah, I've seen this and sort of giving up on you? Yeah, I mean, people, my friends kind of, you know, turned their backs because they didn't want to condone it. My parents, my parents never gave up on me. I actually have an older brother who's a heroin addict also, but he's, he's been clean for seven years. But, uh, so they like, and, and they, they dealt with addiction in their family. So they kind of, you know, been at the forefront before, so they never wanted to give up on me, but yeah, like friends and coaches, they kind you know, teammates, they're kind of like, you know, they got sick of my shit and I can't blame them. Uh, you know, but I, you know, I, I went to rehab 10 times. I got arrested eight times indirectly or, or directly due to drugs and alcohol. Uh, and you know, be, just being a criminal, um, I went to the psych ward a couple times. Wow. I've been in homeless shelters. I've been in uh, crisis centers. I've been in all sorts. I've been in every kind of facility that you can be in. That's like state run, basically. <laughs> wow. So, and, and now, how so, long? How long now have you been sober for? I'll have two years on the twenty on the twenty seventh. That's that's awesome, and now here you are. You're 14 and one in the UFC. I mean, that's that's so impressive, man. It's pretty amazing, man. I mean, that is so inspiring. And do uh, you credit your sobriety with this success? I mean, it seems like they go hand in hand. Oh yeah. I mean, if I wasn't sober, then you know, well, for me, I'd probably be dead or in jail. But by the way, we have to thank our sponsor, uh, Speedweed.com. No, by the way, uh, no. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Now, uh, now, do you have a uh, girlfriend, a wife? What's what's the deal with socially? Um, I mean, I'm like here and there, you know. I haven't like settled down with anyone yet. Yeah. Um, so like, not as of right now. You know, there's girls around me, but uh, you know, I'm taking it like slow because like my career comes first and. You know, like my sobriety comes first. So before I just like jump into a relationship, I have to make sure that like, you know, it's gonna help me and not, you know, fuck hey, my let head me, up. Let so. me ask you something. When it comes to girls and the kind of life that you've got now, like, what do you think would be better for you? A girl that had also recovered and understood the struggles, so you guys could help each other stay clean, or someone who's never lived that life and would be, you know, and doesn't relate to it at all, but also would never even think about bringing that kind of thing into your home. I mean, I guess, oh, man, let me tell you something about, I mean, I'm not trying to, like, sound like an asshole, but uh, girls that are that are in recovery, they've been through a lot, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, in a good way. A lot, of, a lot of the times they carry, like, way more baggage than, than a guy does. Oh, okay, <laughs> right, 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 right. Now I see what you're saying. You know yeah. What I mean? No, yeah, I, 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 I do a lot of comedy shows for people in like recovery. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times I did one for all women. They're all like so many hot chicks there, but just you're just like. The store, yeah. A, 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 any joke that I had, yeah, I'm up. like, they all raised their hand. They could identify with. Cool. <laughs> like, any, yeah, it's like. Yeah. It's scary, man, because like I did a lot of crazy shit to get, to get money and drugs. Like, you know, I beat people up, I robbed people, I broke into houses. So you can imagine if, if you're a woman, what you're doing. To get money and drugs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. were you ever a uh, things that happened to them in the past? So were you ever a, a like, were you ever a uh, male prostitute? No, no, I never. When it came, when it got bad for me, I, I more or less just uh, would rob drug dealers or 
Rob could steal shit. I was steal, you know, doing like, like stealing stuff from like Home Depot and pointing it and robbing drug dealers. Like that was way easier for me. What's your record in uh, What's your record in drug dealer fights? <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually undefeated, man. Nice, yeah. I had a, I mean, I don't know actually. I had a gun put in my face one time, and I kind of had to, kind of had to just say, "All right, you got this." But they didn't rob me. They just, they so were just trying to punch me. So it was me a out. draw. So, it was a, it was a draw. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess you know. <laughs> <laughs> a little different. Damn, you, you you've had some life, man. Now, no, I I know yeah. that like sometimes when like boxers were gonna fight other boxers. They people would send prostitutes or to their to the, or, or food. The people send like heroin to like your to like your to hotel. Slow down your training. Like like the night before a fight or something. I mean, I've had things like that before. Yeah, where I need people to uh, like meet me. I think I actually just uh, I just met Karen. He was a Celtics. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. You're breaking up a little. Hello. You're not. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Damn. It's a good interview. All right. You know, yeah. There yeah. Is. Oh, oh, you're back. You, wait. Who did you, who did you meet? Yeah, I'm back. I, I met um Chris Heron. He was uh on the Celtics. He was on the Nuggets. He was a big basketball player. Whatever. So he um was telling us a story where he he was warming up for a Celtics game and he was at the, I think it's the PD arena where they play, and uh, he needed drugs and he was warming up. He was in his warm-up outfit and his dealer met him outside on the corner and he's wearing his, his warm-up outfit outside and everybody's looking at him like, yo, aren't you supposed to be pl- like playing in five minutes? And he's, <laughs> he's out there t- He's out there copping oxy cotton on the corner in his in his freaking warm up outfit and everybody's looking at him like and this was his first game for the Celtics. So he was oh he was making God. his his debut basically and he's he's outside on the corner copping drugs like in a drug dealer's car right before the game. So oh, wow. I thought that was pretty hysterical, yeah. Damn, dude. Well li- well listen man, you've come such a long way, dude. You're such an inspiring guy. Uh uh, where can people? I know there are a lot of listeners out there who have issues of our podcast. Uh, where can people find you? <laughs> they, have, they have issues with us. Yeah, with us, but also uh, <laughs> with like themselves. So, uh, where can people find you? Yeah, um, on on Twitter, I'm J Flash Gordon MMA. Yeah, nice. And on Instagram, uh, I'm Jared Flash Gordon. And hey, you guys can hit me up anytime you want. I, I'll literally. You know, answer all you guys. Uh, if I if I can help one of you guys, not have to deal with the the bullshit I did, then uh, then I'll then I'm here to help. Uh, thank you, man. What a guy, man. That's awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, thank great, you. you're a great guy, man. And uh, and, and, and uh, enjoy your weekend. Yeah, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Take care. All right. That was Jared Flash Gordon. Nice. What a, what a story, huh? Man, he's uh, he's seen some road. Yeah. He's seen a lot of uh, a lot of dark times. But he's not afraid of anything. You know what? That's the thing. You know, I was saying earlier about you know, sort of you're in and out of rehab. And it doesn't work if you don't want it to. This is a guy that it wasn't even. He kind of kept kept getting retrapped by the the pharmaceuticals. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he didn't want to relapse. He relapsed because of injury, and then and that you know what I mean. It brings up the broader question of the way these things are just prescribed, like they're nothing. Yeah. You know, like they're just a pain. They prescribe them like it's aspirin or Tylenol or something, but it's not. It's fucking heroin in a pill. And they're making money on it. Yeah. And then nobody seems to care. Yeah. And all these people wind up on heroin because it's easier to get heroin than it is to keep getting these pills. But these pills are so fuck. They killed Prince. A Prince was a teetotaler. Never drank. Never did drugs. Didn't allow it in Paisley Park. But then he fucking has the hip surgery. Starts taking the pills. Same thing with Michael Jackson. Starts taking, you know, he had the, the burned head thing from the Pepsi commercials. So then he starts taking, they do the skin grass. That's, that's not he, what happened. Then he gets, that, no, isn't no, that what how happened, he got healed on no, the pain killers? No, what happened with Farrah Fawcett died and then God asked her, "What do you want to do?" And she said, "Save the children." And then the God killed Michael Jackson. That's that's the. That sounds right. That's, <laughs> that's right. That's I'm sorry, the, I did see that. That was on that, People. Yeah, that's that was in People magazine. That, that's, that's what. Just, I, that's the Sarah Fawcett. What the fuck that are was, you? That, that was the joke that after he died. Like, uh, like God said, "What do you want to do? Save the children." And he kills <laughs> Michael Jackson. You mean Sally Struthers? No, isn't it Farrah Fawcett died like the day before? 
Michael Jackson? I don't know. Did she? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. She said, she said I, I want to save the children. She got God killed. That's a good joke. I didn't make it. Fuck you. That's a great joke. I think it's a great joke within those three days. If you know <laughs> that Farrah Fawcett fucking died two days before him. I mean, I don't know. She's not exactly known for her care for children. Sally Struthers, she did all those stupid ass commercials. Farrah Fawcett's known for fucking the poster we all beat off to as children. <laughs> She wants to save the children. We all would have fucking lost our boners. <laughs> she saved the children. She saved the children from jerking off to her in the 70s. The kids in the socks. She saved. Yeah, she saved the children the from so- being born. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what do you have coming up? No, I already told you. Yeah, the the we got the El Paso comic strip. We have the Dirty at twelve thirty, the South Point Casino on the 29th of December, and then New Year's Eve at the Underground Comedy Club in downtown Seattle, Washington. Come out and see me. I rock those shows. They're always a lot of fun. December twenty first to the thirty first, twenty fifth to the thirty first. I will be at the Stratosphere in Las Vegas. Uh, I'm in Pachanga Casino January for, uh, 5th, 6th, and 7th. Oh, and I want to do a guest spot for you when I'm there on Friday. In Pachanga? Yeah, no, at, at, the, at the Stratosphere. Nice, do it. Uh, absolutely. And San Diego, the Comedy Palace, Friday the 12th, 13th of uh, January. And it's in Seattle at the Underground. I'm filming, filming my, recording my CD January 18th, 19th, and 20th in Seattle. And then in Alberta, Calgary, Alberta, Comedy Cave, the 23rd to the 20th. Who books you down at the palace now? Who books it now? Zach. No, oh, he's still booking it. Still booking it. Yeah, all right. So listen, thank you for listening to our podcast. I hope you guys all have a great weekend and uh, your happy holidays. Thank you. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.